All right, yes, I'm a smidge late in reviewing the new er, RX 9070 series GPUs from AMD. In my defense, we didn't get sent them for review until I had to take a fortnight trip to South Africa and Yins bought all of them at retail, so I actually had my 9070 XT order canceled by Newegg. But here we are, about a month removed from the launch of these watershed cards, and we did our best to cover some things in this video that weren't typically covered at the original release 30 plus days ago. We have three different flavors of XT that we tested. One non-XT 9070, comparing it to the latest NVIDIA stuff, and we spent quite a bit of time playing with overclocking via power profiles in undervolting. So there's a bit more here than what we would have done if we were rushed to hit the embargo date for AMD. Not that we could have since we didn't have them cards. Additionally, we have the value of hindsight knowing that the prices AMD indicated at the March 6th birth did not hold in the real world. So we can do an updated price value comparison against what NVIDIA is putting out there. So for testing, we had our grubby mitts on the Aorus Elite, ASRock Tai Chi, and Steel Legend 9070 XTs. AMD sent us the Aorus, Trick sent us the Tai Chi for a build, and we ripped the Steel Legend out of a Best Buy pre-built because that was the fastest way for me to buy one before I knew we were getting the others. And the 9070 that we used in testing was the Power Color Hell Helm that I personally bought on Newegg. We stacked all those up against the 7900 GRE and 7900 XTX from AMD, and then the RTX 5070 and 5080 from Nvidia. Again, just like our 5070 and 5080 reviews, we don't have access to a 5070 Ti since we didn't get a sent to sample, and they're a Sabrina Carpenter concert. Sold out. To get all the particulars of the cards out of the way before we dive into the gaming numbers, we're just going to be using the Aorus Elite and Hellhound in our comparisons to the other cards, and then I'll get to the comparisons between each of the XTs after that, and following that, the overclocking undervolting stuff. So, looking at temps and power draws, the AMD cards still draw quite a bit of power, but definitely deliver the frames to back it up. The 9070 was the lowest out of our testing at 230 watts, then the 5070 at 252, then the 7900 GRE at 265, followed by the 9070 XT at 340, the 5080 hit 343, and then the 7900 XTX was the hungriest juice sucker at 347 watts under gaming load. But they all didn't appear to be thermally constrained at all. The 9070 XT and 5080 ran at about 55C during the sweat sessions Marvel Rivals, while the rest of the lineup was close to 65C. Nothing to really constrain the GPUs, even with the XTX's blower style card. Now, using our 10 game testing suite that includes a mix of AAA graphical heavy hitters and some lighter esports titles, we find that the order changes up quite a bit from the power draw list. Using the 9070 as the baseline GPU, we see that it beats the 7900 GRE by about 19%, which is right around what AMD claimed. Then it's about 4% faster than the same priced NVIDIA 5070. It's 10.5% slower than the 7900 XTX, 17% slower than its XT big brother, and 37% slower than the RTX 5080. But while the 5080 looks like it's massively above all the other cards, I gotta take a moment to just sit right here and tell you how the charts got wonked out by one game. It's no secret that certain games tend to perform better on AMD or Nvidia, depending on the game engine and game developer. And there's one game in our lineup that is just so preferential to Nvidia cards that it heavily skews our overall comparisons. In games like Monster Hunter Wilds, there's barely a 1% difference between the 9070 XT and the RTX 5080. They trade blows in Horizon Forbidden West as well. Even in Cyberpunk, without ray tracing, these two heavily price separated cards go toe to toe. The game that violates our standard deviation curve happens to be Black Myth Wukong, with there being a 37% gap between those two cards, which makes sense if you only look at price and not how the 9070 XT holds up in nearly every other title. Maybe this will get resolved with future driver updates, or maybe the gap will stay there, but we also want to give you comparisons just dropping the monkey game from the list, even if I love it so much. Seriously, it is a fun game, not just a good GPU benchmark. I beat it, got the secret ending, it was fantastic. Anywho, I'm gonna get back to the data. Removing the Monkey King, the chart changes a scoochie. The 9070 beats the GRE by 21%, the 5070 by almost 8%, it loses to the XTX by a larger 12.4%, the XT9070 by 17%, and then the 5080 only pops up to be 33% faster. Now, changing it up to use the 9070 XT as the baseline card with the Monkey Game, it beats all the competing cards except for 
for the 5080, which is a 17% winner. Banishing Sun Wukong narrows the gap between the 5080 and the XT to just 14%. It's clear the 5080 is the faster card, but at a major cost. Looking at actual street prices, the AMP 5080 we used is 90% more expensive than the Oris Elite XT. Presuming MSRP though, the 5080 should only be 66% pricier than AMD's newest flagship, but still, that's a lot of dosh for less than 20% performance gain, and no increase in VRAM. 16 gig half in thousand dollar car that the 5080 regrettably is. Speaking of value though, here's the rest of the price to performance lineup for the cards as tested at actual market prices. And then here's that same chart if we assume you can somehow find these cards at their regular old MSRPs. Breaking things down with the going prices for these GPUs on the open market is rough. Most of the cards are going for hundreds of bucks more than their supposed real price. Our dollar per frame for 1440p native performance makes the 9070 XT Steel Legend the best bang for buck at MSRP. But considering street prices, the Hellhound's actually the better deal. Looking at 4K performance, the best option for maximizing your cash is, in the real world market, the 9070 Hellhound. But you are getting slightly lower 4K performance by going with the non-XT card. If you go with any of the other higher end cards, then the Oris Elite and Steel Legend cards end up being close to the same value with 9.2 and $9.3 per frame respectively. At MSRP though, the 9070 Hellhound and 9070 XT Steel Legend are similarly close, being only $0.1 off per frame. So. It's incredibly clear that AMD has a winner on their hands with this latest RDNA 4 generation. They stack up no problem against Nvidia's competition and outpace the generation before healthfully. If you can get either the 9070 or 9070 XT at a fair and reasonable price, they'll absolutely give you a great gaming experience. The XT is the better value card overall, considering it's top tier level performance, but getting the 9070 bare bones wouldn't put you too far behind though. But now let's shift our attention to the three different 9070 XT cards and see if there's any value in picking up an overclocked expensive model or sticking to an MSRP card. The Oris Elite is the most expensive of our bunch at $759. The ASRock Tai Chi is $729, and the ASRock Steel Legend was $599 at launch, but has since bumped itself up to $669, an 11% price jump. I will also take this moment to say that Newegg has the price at $670. Micro Center still has it at MSRP, but it doesn't pop up in search results, only if you have a direct link to it. It's a real weird situation. They're not in stock anyway, 670 is the presumed price here. Now, there are differences between these cards. The MSRP cards are rated to run at 304 watts, which the Steel Legend does, but the Tai Chi and Aorus cards have an 11% higher power draw, coming in at 340 watts of total board power. The temps on the cards, though, were slightly different than their wattages indicate. The Steel Legend actually ran the hottest, coming close to 60C in gaming. The Aorus Elite was closer to 55C, and then the Tai Chi was the best cooled of the bunch, at just 50C in the middle of graphical output. And the performance gap is related to pricing. The priciest Oris Elite is the top framer with a 90 FPS average in all of our testing. The Tai Chi drops only two FPS to average 88, and then the Steel Legend was only five FPS off coming in at 85. So you get 94% of the total performance of the most wallet draining card for just 88% of the price. 78% if the Steel Legend drops back to MSRP. So really, this can be summarized to say, spend as little money as you can on a 9070 XT while getting the card look that you want. It's an obvious statement, but we wanted to reassure you that you're not missing out a ton by going with the lower priced MSRP models that have lower power targets. 11% higher draw for 6% better performance on these guys. The value is in the 9070 XT, not the variance. But speaking of power and performance changes, let's now get to the over overclocking section of this presentation. As demonstrated in many previous generations of AMD cards, the best way to get more frames out of your Radeon GPU is to 
under vaulted rather than try to jam it full of as much electrical pressure as possible. Der Bauer had a great video where he got a ton of extra performance out of his Red Devil limited edition card, but we didn't quite have the same headroom on any of our XTs. With getting the voltage as low as it would go while still being perfectly stable for everyday use and cranking the power limit up as much as we were allowed, which was only 10%, we saw a whopping total of 3% better performance. It's nowhere near what others have gotten, but it was consistent across all three variants of these RDNA 4 cards. Maybe AMD will give us more access to tinkering with the innards to squeeze out more performance, but it wasn't anywhere near enough to put the XT in 5080 territory besides the couple of games where there was already a 1% gap. But as we showed in our RTX 5080 review, which you can check out right up there, those are capable of boosting another 7 to 10% as well. So if you tweak the XT, the 5080's tweaking puts it even further beyond. But the brass tax at the end of the day is, wow. AMD created a killer set of GPUs this generation. The 9070 and 9070 XT exceeded every expectation that I had for them prior to launch, when we were just hearing rumors of what they could be. They slap Nvidia similarly priced 5070 so hard that it was completely dead on arrival and a bad value if you just care about pure gaming performance. They get reasonably close to the 16 gig limited 5080 while costing significantly less even with horrible MSRP practices by AMD as well. And they overall seem like a no-brainer choice if you're looking for a solid gaming GPU and you don't want to spend a grand on a card. That's something that I couldn't say about the 7000 series cards. They were a good value, but a 4080 Super versus a 7900 XTX was a closer toss-up than what we have here today. Obviously, NVIDIA has other intangibles such as their DLSS 4 tech, multi-frame AI generation, massive media encoders on the 50 series, and CUDA acceleration, which can sway people to get the worst value team agree. But it would only be worse value for gaming. If you're just a pure and true gamer with no business use cases or content creation, I see no reason not to go AMD this generation.